What's up, Belle here? We are back for some more creepy pastas. Um, so today I found a whole bunch of creepy pastas off a of Wattpad. Uh, most of them are by this person named Maddox Schreyer. Um, <clears throat> so shout out to them. I found a shit ton of creepy pastas I didn't even know existed because I've never dug deep into into that far of the community of creepypasta so i'm very interested um um i found the ones that are mostly like long enough um to where i won't read super fast and i'm sorry if i do sometimes <laughs> i apologize that that does happen i always notice it like as soon as i get into reading something it's just my brain processes things faster than most people so whenever i do read it's really fast and it comes out super fast so <clears throat> i'll try to slow it down though but <clears throat> yeah today we're gonna be reading about jason the toy maker i have no idea who the hell is this who the hell this is but let's just get right into it i don't have many memories left from my past the faces of my real parents were like faded masks in my mind i only had some remains of my childhood faceless names and total darkness at the age of nine, something happened into my family. Something had happened into my family. The trauma was so deep that it made me forget most of my life. I had only had a shred of memory related to my best friend. He was the only one I had in my whole life. It was like an image stuck in my mind, going together with laughter in the background and the melody of a music box. Among the back holes of my am amnesia, I caught a glimpse of this honey of his honey colored eyes and dark mahogany hair. I remembered his friendly smile, but nothing else. All the rest disappeared in the dark, and so did he. The memories went back to the orphanage from where I was born. Some awesome parents, Madalena and Stephen, who gave me back <clears throat> the warm feeling of having a family, adopted me, a feeling in which I had forgotten. They raised me in their house until the age of 15. My amnesia led me to go on ex examinations and psychological checkups, which year after year were slowly starting to fail. It looked like I wouldn't be able to get my memory back. The fa this fact left me distorted. On one hand, I wanted to know what happened, but on the other, an odd feeling of anxiety suggested that I do not wish for it. Obviously, there were some unpleasant consequences to my trauma. It was like, it was just like some paranoia of being... Uh, persecuted by something. The specialist told my parents that it must have been linked to a particular memory, which was continuously stimulated. Neither the cause nor was it exactly, or it, what it was exactly was clear, but despite my efforts, I couldn't focus on it. I feel like I was being observed, but not by people, by the stuffed toys in my room. It, it was stupid, I know, but at the beginning they were simple toys, uh, simple toys, but time and time again, their big round eyes seemed to stare at me. Since I was little, I thought the stuffed toys in my room were alive, and sometimes I tried to prove it. I spied out my room with the door left ajar, and then I turned back suddenly, and I never took my eyes off them. Not until I felt a bit of a burning sensation from not blinking my eyes. That memory was one of the few from memories from my childhood that still made me smile. But things have changed. Time after time, the stuffed toys were the ones staring at me. It almost looked like they wanted to test me, and I couldn't bear it anymore. <clears throat> the thoughts stuck in my mind. At times, it seemed like they wanted to, that they wanted to move, turning their little faces towards me. And at other times, they made their, noise, their noises in the room. This couldn't be true, obviously. But why did this thought persecute me? Why did I hate those stuffed toys? And in spite of everything, why didn't I get rid of them? I could have presented them to other children or throw them in the rubbish. And one day I tried, I, I really did. But when I took one of them into my arms, a strong sense of anxiety and terror had stopped me. I always ended up putting them back in their places on the furniture, on my bed, on the sh and on the shelves. And then I had to take tranquilizers. There was only this one toy I took along with me during the night. Despite my age, I couldn't separate from him, and I felt a fami familiar affection from him this that started long before my amnesia. I found him in my wardrobe at the orphanage. From, from there on, we became inseparable. 
It was a sweet bunny with ears as long as him. On one side it was red, and on the other side it resided a caramel color. He wore a black waistcoat and two long sleeves that draped down to the point of his feet and dashed an elegant collar that donned pointed tips at the edge of the fabric. <clears throat> His, left le his little left beady eye was covered with a stylish frilly eye patch, and at the center drawn, and at the center donned a black button. It was funny, but it looked like the only stuffed toy that was harmless. He slept by my side ever since I was little, and just like that night, after I sneak under the sheets, falling asleep almost instantly among the creaking old walls. I was standing still in the darkness, unable to move, and I couldn't understand how I ended up there, surrounded but only by the distilled silence. Something slimy grabbed my wrist and it held me so tightly that an instant pain shot right through me. A set of white nails slowly penetrated my flesh. I watched them cutting through my skin, making me bleed. I screamed and cried, but a laugh bellowed out, covering my desperate pleas. She belongs to me, a voice whispered to me. Within the dark abyss, two screen sparkling eyes appeared before me. They were, in they were a few inches away from my face. You are only a hindrance to me. He laughed, amused by my pain, while he pierced needles under my nails and into my flesh. He ruined my body with rusty tools. On the contrary, he said he was going to fix me all up. I noticed an open door, the only thing I could distinguish from the darkness. My eyes blurred by the pain, and I saw a glimpse of people standing still, gazing down on me. The image of that door got closer in order to show me their vacant expression, despite the, despite the grimaces plastered on their faces. I saw that they were not real people. They were dolls in some way, and I felt a strong sense of nausea overcome me by just staring at them. There was something about them that made me weak to my stomach, and maybe it was their extraordinary and macabre resemblance to real people. She belongs to me. <clears throat> With that... With that, I woke up, my eyes wide open, and, to, and the beating heart and the beating of my heart was so loud that I could feel them pounding inside my throat. I couldn't breathe, so I stood up and sat back down. I rubbed my eyes, and I realized that I was still sweating. The bunny fell, landing upside down, and I leaned down for him, putting it back on my bed. My breathing returned to its normal breathing pace, but the image of those needles, dirty blood, and those terrifying dolls remained embedded in my mind. I had never had such a nightmare like that before. The feeling was so terribly real, and I still felt those claw marks, those claws making a hole in my flesh, but I was relieved that I woke up. The door squeaked. It was my mother coming in the room. As soon as she saw my exhausted face, her smile on her face faded away. Honey, are you okay? Yeah, I just had a nightmare. Now everything's all right. Well, okay, Daisy came to visit you. I, I told her to wait for, for you in the living room. <clears throat> and with that, I got out of bed. I, dressed, I was dressed poorly, but I didn't want my best friend to see me in that way. When my mother closed the door, I ran out of my wardrobe and took out an ordinary dress. Oh, it's a female. Oops, I didn't know that. In the space of my few minutes, I came out of my room neat and ready. In the haste, I was finally out of breath. Finally! exclaimed Daisy, smiling. I met Daisy at middle school, and ever since then, we were inseparable. She was a kind and generous person. She was always welcome in my family. My parents appreciate her good manners, but what I loved about her was especially was that she never asked me anything about my past. I was able to tell her about my amnesia, um, amnesia in, a com in complete confidence. The day was so nice and sunny that we laid in the garden under an old tu tupelo tree. We walked while sheltering from the sun in the shade of the tree. I bought some colored pencils and blank sheets of paper, and we both started drawing. Daisy felt tired immediately. She started picking daisies and putting them in her blonde braid while she gossiped about Louisa, a girl who lived from being the center of people's attention. While my friend was talking, I listened to her and kept drawing without taking my eyes off the sheet of paper. Who's that? She asked, suddenly noticing drawing. It was as if I fell asleep in that exact moment. I batted my eyelids in front of the sheet of paper, and I felt rather confused about seeing a drawing repeated several times of the same character. I don't know. I did not have the slightest idea who he was. The clearest drawing showed a man wearing a black jacket with an extravagant and volumin voluminous fur on his shoulders. He had a beautiful, happy smile and two yellow eyes that was covering a bit of his fringe. He wore dark clothing, and in his hands he was holding a little blue case resembling a music box. Maybe I saw him in an illustration book? Oh, okay, let's go have ice cream, said Daisy, changing the subject of our conversation, seemingly not very interested. 
The ants are coming under my skirt. <laughs> Rand, but okay. On the same night, I had another nightmare, and this one was worse than the previous two, previous one I had before. I dreamt about the dark figure again, who brutally tortured me and kept saying the same phrase all over again. She's mine. I woke up at 2 a.m., breathing rapidly. I curled up, feeling the wall behind my back, and I put my hands over my face, and I breathed in deeply. It was a dream. Just a dream, I whispered. I then looked over at the bunny next to me, which was looking back at me with his black eye and with an irritated glance. I threw it on the floor. So, since that moment, I started sleeping with that thing. My dreams turned into meaningless nightmares. I turned around to, the, to rest my legs in that moment. I touched something with my foot. I elevated my gaze and I noticed a doll sitting on my bed. At first, I was frozen in place. All I could do was stare at her. I didn't understand how she appeared there. My mind started thinking back to my parents who who given me a present. Uh, perhaps I didn't have a real thing for dolls. And to tell the truth, her presence in my room bothered me. It was a peculiar doll made of wax and unusual characteristics. She had a headdress of flowers flowing through her hair and only a few locks caressed her cheek. She wore an ember a white lace dress with a black ribbon tied to her waist. Her arms were unordinary, unordinary long and she had long tapering fingers that were not even normal. What caught the most of my attention was a rose that was put in the center of her mouth as if she was, it was supposed to silence her. I looked at her closer and I scanned her under the moonlight. I touched her face and realized there was something wrong. I kneeled down and tried to get even closer look at her. And then I heard something. A sort of subdued sound, like a wheeze. It was coming from the same doll. Screaming light, her falling down the floor and stood up in horror, trembling violently and pushing myself back to the wall, screaming for my parents. Suddenly, everything turned surreal. The wall next to the door enlarged like there was a bubble between the paint and the cement. Slowly, some cracks appeared as they increased in number. The paint fell into pieces, landing on the floor as it revealed the blue door. I haven't the slightest idea what was happening. These things exist only in books or in our imagination. But in my astonishment, I felt something was going to come out of that door. From the door, I see the same black hands I witnessed in my nightmares. Aren't you happy about Daisy coming to visit you? Are you? Said the monster standing on the threshold of the door. I didn't like her either, you know. She screamed a lot. Daisy? What did she have to do with it? I looked around confused, looking for the presence of my friend that was obviously not there anymore. At the end, my eyes watched over the doll. That blonde hair and face of wax looked strangely familiar. I held my breath in a nightmare. It must have been another nightmare. I rushed over to the doll and I turned her face in my trembling hands. I put my ear over her chest and heard another sound along that with a horrible wheeze, the pounding of a heartbeat. Daisy? Daisy! I cried desperately. It had to be a nightmare. Something like this could not have been happening. I realized my parents were not were next to my room according to the sounds I heard. They must have been hearing me scream, but the monster blocked the entrance. He pulled the door shut, blocking it in the same setting def deforming the wood. My parents started punching the other side, and I didn't know what to do. It did not look like a dream. It was perfectly clear. It was more real than those nightmares of darkness and torture. My heart was beating so fast I started to feel the pain from it. The sweat in my forehead and the dull trembling in my hands, which I couldn't keep still. The monster stood at the entrance, not moving from there. In half a light, I could see his evil smirk as if he wanted to wait for my reaction. I unbuttoned Daisy's dress, who looked in prison under in tons of wax, and I started to dig, trying to set her free. I dug and I dug and I dug while her moans became more intense until I started feeling something wet under my nails. <clears throat> I looked at my hands, covered with blood. Her skin must have been mixed with the wax, and all the digging I did was not helping her at all. That thing that was supposedly, supposedly to be Daisy was suffering. Her wheezes were more blood-curdling, but her expression was still that of an passive doll. I trembled with horror... And I had to repress a wretch, and I suddenly felt my arm being grabbed. My splendid Maggie, you ruined your doll! Explained the monster. His whitish eyes sparkled with a pale green light. You even threw Mr. Bunny on the floor. But I forgive you. You must return to the place where you belong. By my side. Who the hell are you? I shook like I shook like mad, a mad trying to set myself free while my parents were trying to break the door down. The expression of the creature was filled with astonishment. I am Jason, the toy maker. 
he exclaimed, your faithful friend and the only one you could trust. At hearing that name, something moved in my memories, like an electric shock ran through my body. My father succeeded breaking the door down and turned on the light. When I finally saw him, his face primed a bomb that exploded, setting free my memories that were buried deep in the corners of my mind all those years. I remember the day we first met. I remember the day we met for the first time. The toys that seemingly to bloom from his hands, I remembered his friendly smile that gradually turned into a sharp, sadistic smirk. That day he showed me with his exasperation. He expected me to give him more attention because of his arrogance. He believed he deserved everything from me. And when he grew tired of me, then he showed me what he really was. He revealed that he eliminated all the people that I surrounded in my life. He kidnapped my friend for turning them into his toy dolls, and I was blindly stupid to always admire them. Rushing home was useless because the blue door reappeared at the center of the living room. He massacred my parents. He took his revenge by taking them away from me and almost got to me too. I managed to es I managed escaping from his clutches, running as, as much as I could away from him. As far as I ran, the smell of blood and that decomposing flesh lingered in the air. It was you! I was possessed by anger, and I started hitting him. You killed them! You! I kept hitting him, but Jason was smiling, as if it was tickling him. He didn't have any remorse for ruining my life. He was a possessive beast who concealed himself from my childish eyes behind an angel's face. He was able to give me everything, and at the same time to terminate everything around me. He was fiendish. Of course it was me, my splendid creature. Mr. Bunny even showed it to you. He smiled with self-evident truth. I made for you many toys, and I can't wait to introduce Merida, but you can call her Mandy if you like. Suddenly, something hit his head and smat and shattered into pieces. My father had a wooden club, and he aimed to blow at the monster's head. But that one broke, but the one that broke was the wood. Jason's smile turned into an infuriated scowl, and his grip increased on my wrist. He turned around when and when my father saw Jason's face, he opened his eyes wide and my mother covered her mouth to conceal her screams. My father didn't waste any time trying again to set me free. The club broke in half, but with that one blow to the toy maker's face, allowed him to let go of me. Together with my parents, I ran out of that room. We quickly rushed to the entrance and my father opened the door, but instead of the garden path in front of us, there was Jason's workshop. Maggie, I give you one last chance, Jason said calmly, walking down the stairs, after which I'll dye the walls with the blood of all the people who surrounded you. You, oh, surrounded you, you bastard. To the kitchen, quick. We run over to the kitchen, hearing the monster's laugh following us. Uh, and once we were in, we could still see through the windows, the toy maker's little factory. Now I was desperate. Desperately sure this wasn't a nightmare. The terror overwhelmed me, and Daisy's blood on my fingers were more real than anything else I'd ever felt. I turned around. Where's Dad? Mother. My mother grabbed a knife, and the closer we got, and got closer to me, holding me tightly in her arms. Stephen. With trembling voice, she called him. We sighed in relief before we saw him coming in the kitchen. Hurry up before my mother's voice blocked. Just like me, she stared at Dad's pale face. He he walked slowly with a fixated look at space, at the space and his uh, eyes wide open. Suddenly he fell on the floor and behind him appeared Jason's frozen smile. The toy maker looked at me with crazed eyes. Mm, Dad's battery decreased, it should be recharged. Jason revealed a giant mechanical key and drove it into my father's back already stained with blood. He turned it with force, twisting my father's backbones. At the second turn, I shouted, covering my ears to block out the sound of breaking bones. But I couldn't help taking my eyes off my father's blood, contorting itself like a snake. Go away! Be gone! Leave my child alone! My mother held me tight at her chest, and despite the terror and tears she shed, her face resembled one of those lioness shielding her cubs. Silence, woman! It's not you who I want to talk to! Growled the furious toy maker, and in the end, he pointed his white claw at me. Come with me, my sweet friend. We will have fun together. We will be back at laughing like we did. No, you're just an insane psychopath. I don't know what kind of monster you are. I have no idea you can exist in this world, but one thing is for sure. You must disappear forever from my life. At the sound of my refusal, Jason's face clouded over and his eyes sparkled with fury. He started to rave to contort himself, jerking his head as if he went on the blink because of me. I don't understand, he growled quietly. I don't understand, he screamed, 
grinding his teeth and his face becoming more terrifying. I was the only one standing by your side when your parents preferred to work than stay with you. I was a loyal friend while the ones surrounding you only looked for you when they needed it. He came closer. I gave you all my attention, gave you loads of toys, and I never made you a lack of nothing. I always aimed for your own good, and that's why I destroyed everything hurting you. His screams were so loud that the that resounded over the walls while my body shook in horror at every word. I got rid of all those people that were saddening you because I wanted you to be happy by my side. And after I looked so for you for so long, you even forgot me? I was a true friend, but you turned your back on me. Suddenly his face relaxed, but not his previous insane smile. After doing everything for you, this there isn't another explanation. There's something really wrong with you. He instilled on me as an accusatory look. You really were a bad little girl, so I have to fix you up. What? I trembled with my voice. You heard me while you un- you were a little ungrateful. I will fix you up so you'll be good, he snickered. You'll become a very beautiful toy doll. My mother, who was paralyzed by Jason's triad, suddenly awoke and pointed the knife over him. If you even dare to graze gate Maggie, I swear I will kill you. Jason looked at my mother with a challenging gaze and slowly came closer. The knife was trembling in my mother's hand while the toy maker gave an ex- inexpressive gaze. She couldn't stand the tension. She pushed me behind her and hurled herself on him. My mother stabbed him in the heart and the monster opened his eyes wide. He made a contortion of pain, congelating his dark eyebrows, and my mother smiled triumph- triumphantly. Just kidding. In that moment, a smoke appeared, uh, reappeared on Jason's face. He opened his arms with nonchalance without even taking out the knife from his chest. My mother was shocked and stood still for a few seconds, but she was possessed by an exasperation and started stabbing him several times, trying desperately to make him react somehow. The disgusting sounds of the flesh pierced by the knife could be heard, heard clearly while the shirt was ripping but Jason kept his balance perfect. That's enough now, he commented bored, and straight after, he hit my mother on her face, making her fall violently on the floor. I'll be in trouble if you scratch it. I was quick, quickly next to my mother, helping her get on her knees. The side of her face was already swollen. My eyes leaped to the toy maker. I was waiting for his immediate revenge, but I was petrified when I glimpsed at what he was doing. He unbuttoned his shirt and drove his nails into his chest, close enough to the injuries he got from the knife. He sank his claws into his flesh, and he slowly started pulling on the opposite side. The wound appeared as a little rip in the center, which enlarged as the flesh shredded like paper. A thick black liquid dripped onto the floor, and it was not blood. Even if it was, there must have been something rotting. Something sparkled in his exposed ribcage. Probably forget how much I care for my splendid music box, but luckily everything's all right. He took his hands off his exposed chest and covering the hole with his shirt, hiding the music box that started to play from the inside. He then came closer. I wanted to scream. I wanted to beg. But in the horror I had witnessed left me completely paralyzed to do anything, which implied squeezing up with my mother. It only took a yank from the toy maker to tear her out of my arms. He took her up without effort and pushed her back onto his chest from pre- for preventing her to wiggle out of him. He, cl- he clutched... His arm around her neck while the other arm blocked the hand that stabbed him. Now I'll show you what happens to whom tries to hinder me, Mom. He slowly bent her arm in the opposite direction. She cried from pain, trying to set herself free, but the monster was strong enough to bend her limb to make the bone come out. My mother sank her nails in his blackish flesh, which flaked apart, producing a nauseating smell, but she could not set herself free since the grip was wrapped tightly. All right, I'll come with you, I shouted with all the voice I had in my body. Jason raised his stare and gave me a serious look. My mother was becoming paler due to the pain and blood loss. She needed my help, but there's nothing I could do before but handing myself to the toy maker. You can take me with you, but leave my mother alone, I said with my trembling voice. After all, we're friends, right? I tried to make a convincing smile despite I was trembling from head to toe. My eyes were filled with tears. Jason smirked. He was outright satisfied and pleased with his victory. Excellent choice, Maggie. At that moment, his arms took back their usual color, his lacerations synthesized in a few seconds, and he was back to his usual appearance. His face returned to his normal state, but I already knew what concealed behind those amber-colored eyes. It seems Jason accepted my surrender, but before leaving my mother, uh, he took out his pocket a little red mouse. It was unmistakably a toy with one of those winding keys.
He grabbed my mother from her jaw and pushed it into her mouth. What's wrong, Mom? Did the mouse take your tongue? He laughed amused, pushing her away from himself. In the nick of time, I saw my mother's eyes wide-eyed and frightened. A light and then an explosion. She fell to her knees, her jaw, her nose, her eyes beat into a bloody pulp. And she fell onto the ground. A stain of blood enlarged from under her body. Blood and pieces of flesh spurted on me, but I was paralyzed in front of my mother's corpse while Jason didn't stop laughing. Well, why did you do that? The toy maker's overwhelming shadow covered me and bent down to me. His face got closer, which spoiled a rift of flesh uh, wrought by the club. Because I'm not your friend anymore, you little shit. Now I'm your creator. He then grasped me by my arm and dragged me towards him. Now, let me fix you up. Yikes. <laughs> that is... That shows something. I guess this is what he looks like. Yeah, creature with features. Building and inventing. Interesting. Licorice. Red mouse side of it. There's a mechanical explosive device. Wow. Crazy shit. I don't even know, like, what I would even do in that situation. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that one. Let me know what you think down below. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and hit the bell so you're notified when I make videos, which is daily. <laughs>